and Michael. Welcome to today's class. In one of the most famous scenes from the Harry Potter series, a group of students new to Hogwarts line up before the Sorting Hat. This magic hat then decides what school house they will belong to, based on their personalities. It's always fun to think what house we would belong to. What kind of people are we? What kind of personalities do we have? Of course, there's no sorting hat in reality. But if we want to learn more about ourselves, we can try a personality test. Today's lesson has two parts. Part one discusses people's personality traits. Part two talks about personality tests and our reactions to them. Do you remember the different Hogwarts houses from Harry Potter? What about the personalities related to each house? House Gryffindor, Harry's house, is for brave students. House Ravenclaw is for intelligent students. House Slytherin is for students who are ambitious and maybe a little dishonest. And then there's Hufflepuff for nice, reliable students. Compared to the brave Gryffindor, Hufflepuff students may seem a little boring. They are kind and supportive, modest and loyal. But these are often more important than we realize. Consider loyalty. To be loyal means to always support someone or something. We need loyal friends to stand by us no matter what. As our Dongni course says, in a group setting, loyal people will act to support the decisions of the group. That means loyalty is also important in business. Dongni course says. That a strong team needs a good leader and loyal followers. Loyal people can be depended on to follow their leader. If employees cannot support their boss, it hurts team spirit as well as productivity. These days, it seems people are more self-interested than loyal. A popular expression in America is "You gotta do you." An employee may sign a contract and then leave their job a few weeks later, or we may make plans with friends and then they cancel at the last minute. So, if we find someone loyal, we should value that friendship. When life gets tough, the loyal people will support us no matter what happens. Another important trait is modesty. Our Dongni course says that modest people don't show off their strengths, but are often very good at what they do. We live in an age of the personal brand. Plenty of people claim to be experts and thought leaders. Others sell themselves as social media KOL or key opinion leader, and Internet celebrities. There are a lot of big egos, and there's a lot of big talk. But while many people sell their abilities, their talk is often cheap. For example, an expert may just be someone with a small blog. Modest people don't pretend to be better than they are. So, if we all lived in Harry Potter's world, which famous people would be a Hufflepuff? Well, Nelson Mandela may be one. Nelson Mandela was an African political leader. He was famous for ending racial inequality in South Africa. But for protesting South Africa's racist government. He was sentenced to twenty-seven years in prison.
during his time in prison, Mandela was offered freedom. If he had stopped protesting the government, he would have been released. But Mandela refused. He knew that if he left prison, even if he was free, South Africa would never be free. So he stayed in jail. He was loyal to his cause. Even though Mandela was seen as a central figure in South African independence, he was always modest. He never believed that he freed South Africa by himself. He said that he was only one person in a larger movement. He never pretended to be anything more than a normal protester. Can you think of anyone who is modest and loyal? Now, let's talk about House Ravenclaw, also known as the House of the Wise. Ravenclaw students are intelligent and creative. They love to learn. They are seen as hardworking students and great test takers. Perhaps there are a lot of Ravenclaw students in China. We all want to think of ourselves as creative. And intelligent. In our society, both of these are very attractive traits. Intelligence gets us into good schools and helps us find good jobs. Creativity shows that we think and express ourselves in an original way. But many highly intelligent and creative people can be a little unusual. They may have a hard time talking to other people, or they may have weird habits. For example, when Beethoven was writing music, he would frequently pour water all over himself. Ravenclaw students are said to be a little unusual. And with intelligence comes pride. Ravenclaw students may be a little conceited, as our Dongni course says. Conceited people. Often have a very high opinion of themselves. They may think that they are better than other people. The painter Salvador Dali may have been a real-life Ravenclaw. He was incredibly creative, strange, and conceited. He said that being Salvador Dali is one of the greatest joys in the world. He also owned a pet ant eater and walked it around Paris like a dog. Can you think of anyone else who is intelligent, strange, or conceited? Intelligence is a trait Ravenclaw shares with another house. Let's talk about Slytherin. Perhaps the most notorious house at Hogwarts is Slytherin. Slytherin students are intelligent and ambitious, and they may stop at nothing to realize their ambitions. In addition to being ambitious, many Slytherin are resourceful. When faced with a challenge, resourceful people are able to find quick and creative solutions. For example, in business, if someone is resourceful, they may think of inventive ways to save money while maintaining quality. Normally, being resourceful and ambitious are positive traits. But many Slytherin may also pursue their ambitions dishonestly. They are not afraid to lie to or deceive people to get what they want. They may not be very trustworthy. A useful phrase to describe the Slytherin attitude is "the end justifies the means." This means the way we accomplish a goal doesn't matter as long as we accomplish it. Success. Is the only thing that's important. Considering their resourcefulness and ambition, many Slytherins probably make good CEOs. Consider Sam Walton, the CEO of Walmart. Sam Walton grew up without a lot of money and built Walmart from nothing. In terms of the money it generates. 
Walmart is the world's largest company. Walmart's success is the result of Walton's ambition. He went from nothing to being the second richest man in the world. Walmart is not a popular company, though. Some believe it destroys local businesses because the businesses cannot compete with Walmart's low prices. It's not a very fair strategy, but for Walton, maybe the ends justify the means. Can you think of anyone who is ambitious and resourceful? Now let's talk about the traits of House Gryffindor. Which include courage, confidence, and arrogance. Gryffindor students are the heroes of the Harry Potter world. They are famous for being brave. They are also very confident, and that can make them a little arrogant. To be brave means to not be afraid of danger. In fairy tales, a brave hero. May fight a dragon to rescue a princess, but to be brave, we don't always need to fight. Sometimes it means standing up for our beliefs when our beliefs aren't popular. Gryffindors are also confident, as our course says. Someone who strongly believes in their ability to do something is often confident. For example. If someone is confident at playing the piano, they may not be nervous when playing in front of others. But one can also be confident in what they believe. They may have a clear sense of what is right and wrong, and they may be willing to fight for what they believe is right. For example, Harry Potter often stands up to bullies when they tease his friends. Of course, sometimes we can be too confident, which can lead to arrogance. To be arrogant is the opposite of being modest. While someone modest may believe they're nothing special, an arrogant person believes their abilities are better than they are. While a modest person may be aware of what they don't know, an arrogant person won't question their beliefs. For example, if someone does well at work, it may go to their head. Rather than continue to work, they may get lazy and see themselves as naturally talented, or unable to fail. So sometimes success can lead to arrogance. To better understand our personalities, we don't need a sorting hat, though. We can take a personality test. In fact. Personality tests have become incredibly popular. The personality assessment industry generates over a billion dollars a year. Here, we're going to talk about why people take personality tests, the personality test industry, and opinions toward personality tests. There are a number of reasons why people take personality tests. One of the most common reasons is to learn more about ourselves. Sometimes we feel we behave in a certain way, but we don't know how to express these traits in words. And it's also fun to hear that we may have traits we haven't considered before. People also use personality tests to help find love and friendship. Look at online dating. A dating site may ask its users to complete a personality test, and then use the results of each test to match users. More detailed personality tests are increasingly being used in the workforce. Eighty percent of Fortune 500 companies use personality tests before hiring someone during the interview process. These tests help determine whether an employee's attitude and behavior is a good fit for the company.
For example, the firm KPMG uses personality tests to find out someone's communication style and decision-making ability. Of course, these companies don't always develop these tests on their own. To meet growing demand for personality tests in the office, an entire industry has emerged. The personality assessment industry is very profitable. As of 2013, it earned from around two to four billion dollars. The most popular test in the world is a questionnaire called MBTI. It is often used during the hiring process by HR departments, universities, and even government agencies. It is taken by two million people every year around the world. The personality assessment industry isn't just for companies that sell personality tests either. Because these tests are popular among major companies, some businesses sell advice on how to hack the tests. For example, a common MBTI question is, do you like to be in noisy crowds? While many people may not like this kind of situation, if they are interviewing for a job, it may be bad to answer no. That's because what the question is really asking is if they can work well when the office is busy. Many people have different opinions when it comes to personality tests. For some, it's a great way to know themselves. But others may find them unfair, confusing, or even upsetting. Some people may support personality tests. Considering their popularity around the world, many people find personality assessments fun, interesting, and useful. Part of the reason is that we feel good when we know ourselves better. The more we understand ourselves, the more we can determine our needs and handle challenges in our lives. For example, if we need space and quiet serenity to concentrate, maybe we can arrange to go to work earlier and leave earlier. We may also like assessments because they help us understand other people too. For example, if a boss has an employee who enjoys teamwork and an employee who enjoys working alone, they may want to assign them work that brings out their strengths. But not everyone enjoys personality tests. Some people may doubt the results. They may not feel the results describe who they are or what group they belong to. For example, just because a test says they are disorganized doesn't mean they are. Maybe they trust their own experiences rather than a third-party test. Some people believe putting ourselves in categories can limit our own behavior. They may think these tests ignore the importance of personal growth. For example, if someone is shy, maybe they need to get out of their comfort zone and talk to more people. But if a test says they dislike being in groups, it reaffirms their beliefs. Instead of challenging themselves, they just accept the results. In an office setting where tests are being used to hire and fire people, some people may feel taking them is unfair. Most people probably want to be judged based on their performance, not their personality. Personality tests can lead companies to make simple and possibly inaccurate assumptions about their employees. In English, this is called putting people in boxes. No one wants to lose their job over a test. But this has happened. For example, in England, a productive employee was fired after receiving a promotion 
because of the results of his personality test, even though the company had decided to give him a promotion based on his performance. The company then took it away. When making a decision to fire an employee, should someone's test results have more influence over personal experience? For some people, these tests just may be creating more prejudice in the world. Years ago, we had many prejudices against people based on their gender and race. For example, we used to believe women were more emotional than men. We have learned those prejudices were wrong and unfair. Do we really need new ways of labeling people? Whether they think personality tests are unfair or just confusing, people may be right to distrust them. There is not a lot of evidence to suggest personality tests are even accurate. Let's examine the accuracy of personality tests from a scientific perspective. In science, when judging the effectiveness of a test, the two most important factors are reliability and validity. Reliability refers to the repeatability of findings. If a test is reliable, no matter how many times we take it, our results should be the same or similar. On the other hand, validity is an indication of how solid a test is. If a personality test has a high validity, its findings will accurately reflect an individual's true personality. Let's look at a reliable test. If we take an HIV test, we will have the same result every time. But this is not the case. For popular personality and psychology tests, in fact, studies have shown these tests do not offer reliable results. For example, at the University of Pennsylvania, a psychology professor took MBTI several times over a few months. The results changed every time he took the test. Now let's look at why these tests may not be valid. From a scientific perspective, it is hard to measure how accurate these tests are. Studies have shown that the tests are only accurate if people believe the results. Part of why people enjoy personality tests is because they strengthen the traits they want to believe. For example, when someone sees that they are creative on a test. They're likely to think, "Oh, that's so me." Who wouldn't want to be creative? At the same time, people may ignore negative test results without questioning their accuracy. For example, if the same test says someone is creative but depressed, that person may ignore depressed but accept creative. In other words. We believe what we want to believe. This is known as the Barnum effect. But there is little scientific evidence to suggest that these tests are valid. The National Academy of Sciences conducted a study of twenty kinds of Myers-Briggs tests. Commonly used in the workplace, they determined only one test was accurate enough to use. So, in conclusion, there's no doubt personality assessments are fun. We can share the results with our friends, get a little confidence boost, and maybe even learn something about ourselves. But beyond having fun. We should take these tests with a grain of salt. Human beings are more complex than a score or a ranking. Looking at the results of a personality test rather than looking at someone's actual personality will lead to poor judgment.
Well, that's it for today. Let's quickly review what we learned. In the first part, we examined the different personalities that the students in the Hogwarts houses have. Then, in the second part, we took a closer look at the current personality test industry. Remember, when making important decisions, we should rely on more than just third-party assessments. And if we do use these tests to make decisions, we should use them responsibly. I'll see you next time.